Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. I am still T Masso at thewatchbox.com. Reach out to me for purchase and pricing details. My email is in the description below. That is T Masso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing. In 1988, Carlo Croco, a scion of the Italian Binda watchmaking empire, decided he had a better idea about how to craft a luxury watch. At the time, premium meant quartz and upscale meant gold, but he flipped the script by combining a rubber strap with a gold case and titanium assembly hardware, something that was considered at the time to be audacious, a little bit subversive, but undoubtedly provocative and attractive. It quickly attracted a a glitterati clientele, and what started as a company known as MDM Genève took on the name of its first product, the Hublot. So when MDM was the company and Hublot, or porthole in French, was the product, the watch looked a lot like this. This is actually a watch launched in the modern era. It is the Hublot Classic Fusion Original. Now, it's based on the 40th anniversary limited edition that came out to celebrate four decades since the original MDM Genève product. This is not the limited edition, but it borrows almost everything mechanically and dimensionally from that watch. In yellow gold, like the original, it's more modern in its size, being 42 millimeters in diameter by 9.7 millimeters thick by 50.2 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip. This could actually pass for the original watch if folks don't know what they're looking for. Of course, the original was quartz and much smaller, but this is so true to history that it just looks right and it looks true. It's definitely unlike any other Hublot in the current catalog, and it really shows that the company's historic range, if you go back catalog, offers almost every kind of watch collector a style they can love. So what we have here is a modern homage watch, but it is a modern watch. 42 in diameter is fairly sizable. It's definitely not an undersized watch or a traditionally sized watch. And on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it feels like a good fit. You can see how the lugs are angled down and the strap, still in rubber, very pliant. So I can recommend this watch for a wrist as small as 15 centimeters circumference. You can see I've got plenty of clearance side to side when I look down the barrel. And from over the top, it always exaggerates the width of the watch from this angle, plus I'm pulling the strap tight. I haven't buckled it down or sized it. But you'll also note, uncharacteristically thin for an Hublot, this is absolutely a dress watch, a sporty dress watch, but no trouble fitting underneath an elegant and tight dress cuff. Of course, back in the day, the rubber strap on a gold watch was considered to be a little bit heretical, and to I guess soften the blow, you could say. The strap was made as rich and supple as possible and scented with vanilla. What we've got here is again a thin, pliant, black rubber strap, which also provides a great tonal contrast with the bright yellow gold. You can see there are scoring marks built in. This is a uncut strap. It's designed to be cut to length. We'll help you with that. Make no mistake, it'll be correctly sized when we deliver it. You can see that the clasp internal features little swing arms with the Hublot H pattern. You can see that on each end. And then internally, it is DLC black into titanium. Twin trigger release. It's a non-sequential close, but a double folding clasp. Externally, Hublot with lacquered characters. And you can see how this has been faceted with polished and satination. Excellent attention to detail. Because there are two triggers, you must press both, not just one, to deploy this, offering a good deal of security on the wrist. Now, the case flank is curvaceous, polished, rounded, and sexy. The lug hoods are angular and severe. And you can see that there's a contrast in finish. We have here satin, Contrasting with polish, depending on the facet and the surface, we have a push-down crown. We have water resistance of 50 meters. And then you can see the Hublot logo on there. You can see the crown is also somewhat countersunk into the flank of the case so it doesn't stick out too much. We have these polished screws that have the H pattern of Hublot on their face. Vertical satination, a lovely reductivist black lacquer dial with beautiful applique Hublot logo and marquee. We have hands which are baton style, faceted down their center for better contrast, and an H counterweighted lancet style seconds hand with a date window that uses a white on black print, noting Swiss made. Again, this is about as basic and spare as any Hublot design ever. Now, unlike the original, which was quartz and proudly so, back at the time it was thought to be the only option for a super high-end watch, well, here we have an automatic movement. It is a Salita SW300-1, bi-directional automatic winding, 4 hertz beat rate, hacking seconds, quick set date, 42-hour power reserve, all of this pivoting on 25 joules. Of course, a 
SW300 is Salida's version of the thin, tough, and quite accurate ETA289282 that ETA is so old, all the copyrights have expired, so anyone can make their version of it. The Salida is close, but not identical. You can see in Hublot spec, it includes a couple of custom elements, including snailing on the outer edge of the bridge, a straight satin graining across the top, solarization of the barrel, polishing of some of the screws, and then black accenting of other screws. There are bevels here, but they're mechanically applied. That said, it's a pretty good-looking movement, and it's not the cheapest version of this they could have bought. As you can see, that splayed spoke on the balance, that indicates either a top or chronometer grade. You can't see the grade of the hairspring, but you know it goes together with a top or chronometer balance. So this is one down from chronometer, and in the real world, the only real difference is the certification. This could be made to run chronometer standard, which is nice to know, as it's a feather in the cap of this thin fine, elegant, and surprisingly versatile Hublot watch. If you are a fashion snob, this might be the Hublot for you. Not because it's brash, but because it's a different kind of audacious. This represented the avant-garde in 1980, and it's a testament to Hublot's awareness and embrace of its own history that it's bringing back watches like this in the Classic Fusion collection. And it might even be a reason why Classic Fusion, not Big Bang, is now Hublot leading model line. If you love this watch, reach out to me. I am Tim also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.